Hi everybody. It is so great to see you again. It's another beautiful Sunday. So today we have another special guest. Her name is Miss Marissa and she's going to tell you a really awesome story. And here's the thing I want you to do. I want you to sit up straight. I want you to listen really good. And I want you to think about two things as she's telling the story. The first thing is, I want you to remember that all the stories you hear on Sundays in Bethel Kids are all true. And this one especially is gonna be kind of like, did that really happen? I don't know, could that be true? And I want you to remember it's not made up, that it's really true. And we know it's true because that's in the Bible. And the second thing I want you to think about is, what if you had been there? What would you have done? What would you think if you saw what's gonna happen in today's story? So listen really good, and I'm gonna be back in a minute to talk to you about it. Hi, welcome to church today. I'm Miss Marissa, and I'm here to tell you a story all about God's glory. Our story today is about the word transfiguration. Can you say transfiguration? Transfiguration. Say it one more time. Transfiguration. Very good. That means that something has changed completely to become more beautiful and more wonderful. So we're going to figure out how our story has to do with transfiguration. But first, I have a trick for you to help us understand a little bit more. Here, I have three cups. One, two, three, right? There might be something under these cups. There might not be. You don't know. So how can you figure out what's under these cups? Can you see through them? No. Can we, uh, can we look on top of them? No. Um, so how would we tell? And what if I gave you another fun fact? Under one of these cups is a special treat, a couple pieces of candy. Now, we really want to know which one it's under, right? But I still can't see through them. So how, how are we going to do that? Well, kind of like in our story today, God gives us a glimpse of Jesus' glory. I'm going to give you a glimpse under the cup. Are you ready? Let's try the first one. Ready? There's your glimpse. Did you see that, that the, did you see the candy? I don't know. Let's try this one. There's your glimpse. Was it under there? I don't know. Let's check that third one just to be sure. Was the candy under there? Just like you got a glimpse of the candy, God gave us a glimpse of Jesus's glory in our story today. Let's watch our video and find out how. One day, Jesus led three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up on a high mountain to pray. The disciples fell fast asleep. As Jesus prayed, his appearance suddenly changed. His face was shining like the sun, and his clothes were as white as the light. The disciples woke up and saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, I will set up three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While Peter was still speaking, a bright cloud suddenly covered them. A voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with who I am well pleased. Listen to him. The disciples heard this and fell face down. They were terrified. Jesus came up and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When the disciples looked up, they did not see Moses or Elijah anymore. They only saw Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus said to them, Don't tell anyone what you saw until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. The disciples did not tell anyone, but they wondered what Jesus meant. They asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come before the Messiah comes? Jesus explained that Elijah had already come. That is, a prophet like Elijah had come. The people did not recognize him as a prophet and they mistreated him. Jesus said, in the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples realized Jesus was talking about 
John the Baptist. Jesus showed his glory to Peter, James, and John. Jesus said he would die, rise from the dead, and return to heaven. One day, Jesus will come back to earth in his glory to make all things new. Today's story comes from three different books of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And in this story, we see Jesus taking his disciples, Peter, James, and John, up a mountain to pray. But when they got up there, Jesus was praying and the disciples were so tired, they fell asleep. While Jesus was praying, he had a transfiguration. He changed. His face shined bright like the sun and his clothing shined whiter than you've ever seen, whiter than my shirt. And the disciples were still asleep, but then they woke up. And they saw Jesus standing there shining bright like the sun with his clothes super white. And they not only saw Jesus, but they saw Elijah and Moses. Elijah and Moses were prophets from the Old Testament and they had been dead a very long time. So they were shocked to see this. And we don't really know how we knew it was them, but they knew. And so when they saw them, Peter exclaimed, Lord, it is good to be here. And he offered to set up three tents to memorialize them being there. Um, but then a bright cloud came over them. And as Peter was talking, a voice said, this is my son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the disciples were so terrified. They fell on their faces, so scared. If you saw something like that, would you be afraid? I bet you would be a little bit scared too. And the disciples were so scared they were on their faces and Jesus came over to them and he touched them and he said, get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, everything was gone. Jesus was alone. Moses had gone, Elijah had gone, and the cloud had gone. And Jesus said to the disciples, do not tell anyone what you have seen here. And the disciples didn't tell anyone, but they wondered what Jesus had meant. Why did Elijah have to come before the Messiah? So they asked the Lord, they said, why? Why does Elijah have to come before? And they said, Elijah will make a way. Elijah will come, but the people will not recognize him. The people will not understand that he is Elijah the prophet. And they will mistreat him and not treat him kindly. The disciples realized that Jesus was talking about John the Baptist, a man who had been clearing the way for Jesus, but had not been treating, treated very kindly by the people. Jesus was meaning that Jesus, when he would die on the cross, was like John the Baptist, and the people were going to mistreat him because they didn't understand that he was the Son of Man. Jesus was giving us a glimpse into what was about to happen. He was going to die on the cross for us, rise again, and return to heaven. And if there's anything that I learned about this story today, it was that Jesus was both God and man, even while he was here on earth. And we see that through that glimpse of him shining and God um, declaring him his son. We know that he was both God and man. And that small glimpse is what we will get to see in heaven one day. Isn't that exciting? Thanks for tuning in with us. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Wasn't that a cool story? Can you believe that really happened? Remember, I told you it was true that that happened for real. And remember, I asked you to think about what would you have done if you had been there? What would you have done? I think that if I had been there, I would have been amazed. I would have been like surprised and I would have maybe been afraid like the disciples. Here's what I want you to remember about today's story, that Jesus is the son of God and that Jesus is perfect and he loves you. Now remember that God said about Jesus in today's story, that this is my son in whom I am well pleased. What does that mean? That means that God is happy with all the things that Jesus has done. He's very pleased 
And then at the end, he says, listen to him. Boys and girls, we need to listen to what God has to say. We need to obey his word and do what it says because we love him. That's why we obey his word. So we need to remember that Jesus is the son of God and only that could happen to Jesus and that God wants us to listen to him. I'm going to read to you from Psalm chapter 40, verse 5. Here's what it says. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. No one is like God. I will proclaim and tell of them, yet they are more than can be told. Boys and girls, we need to remember that we need to tell others about God and how amazing he is. We need to share about him, just like the disciples did. We need to be in awe of him, just like the disciples were. I hope you remember that today. I miss seeing some of you, but I'm so glad I get to see so many of you at our outdoor services, but I hope I get to see you really soon. I love you very much, and God loves you very much. Bye, everybody.